<laughs> and so I know that a lot of the stuff you make, you use secondhand fabrics, right? Um, how do you source those? So I love secondhand shopping. So most of it is from the op shops. Um, sometimes I'll go on Facebook Marketplace and just have a little look for like vintage fabric or, you know, cool vintage bed sheet. But most of the time it's from op shopping or um, people, when people find out that I like sewing, they will give me their old stashes. And I have, I have um, received, like even the fabric that I'm using today for my bunting, my oh, sister yeah. found this in the Snowy Mountains in uh, Jindabyne and she bought it and she was like, you got to have this. And she sent it to me. And is it you're buying linen and old or is it yeah. like it's fabric remnants? Well, it's never really it's never really just plain fabric. Like there are you can find fabric in op shops, but yeah. I always I'm always looking for other things. So, for example, like um, this is a tablecloth that I found the other day and it's got yeah. someone's beautiful <laughs> embroidery on it. Yeah. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but it's it's called to me. So I'm never just looking for fabric. I'm looking for mm-hmm. curtains, tablecloths, bed sheets, and even like I've got some um, some shirts here that had a couple of marks on them. They're just linen shirts, 100% linen. But finding linen colours like this and this in fabric stores, you know, you don't find so many colours all the time. So. And linen would be expensive, right, to buy new? Linen is expensive. Well, I mean, all, all fabric brand new is expensive. So if you're able to, you know, if, you, if you're on a budget, like me, I don't have um, a lot of money to spend on fabric. So buying secondhand materials any way I can saves me money. So I love it. Yeah. And what are, and is that the main reason you buy secondhand? It's the, the cost saving? Cost is definitely one of the main things. Like I, I want to keep creating, but I can't afford to always go and buy fabric. But also the fact that um, it, it's like unique things. So like this fabric, I mean, this bed sheet, I couldn't just go and find that at a fabric store. Yeah. Um, so there's definitely a cost thing. There's finding things that are unique. And then also sometimes because I'm very DIY, <laughs> I'll be making something that I have never really made before and I might make a mistake so by using fabric that doesn't cost me too much money I don't feel as guilty if I screw up and therefore I can yeah I don't, I don't feel guilty about um making a mistake <laughs> and is the type of fabric important for specific garments like should you be looking for natural stuff like cottons and linens ideally I prefer yeah I prefer to sew with natural fibers just because um I know that in the end it it will it can degrade it can biodegrade like obviously there are other factors in there like dyes and things like that yeah. but personally I prefer to wear natural fabrics like it, just because it's breathable it, it just feels better on my skin yeah. you don't get hot and sticky so it's cold, yeah it's hot. you can't be wearing it yet. is hot <laughs> <laughs> and what about other things that you saw secondhand because I'm assuming you don't just buy your fabric secondhand right no well I'm always looking for unique things and things that like you know, maybe you wouldn't consider that that could become something else. I got really inspired when I worked at the craft parlor on the Gold Coast. If you're from the Goldie, you'll know the craft parlor. And um, in their studio, they have a wall of vintage rackets that have been woven with wool from the up shop. So I was very inspired by Rachel from the craft parlor. And I started hunting for vintage rackets at op shops and garage sales. Actually, I think this one was from a garage sale and it was $2. And so I've got a couple of them now that I've woven up and they're going to become pieces I can hang on my wall. Amazing. No one else will have that. Um, so I'm always looking for unique things like cool tablecloths. I've got here um, a, oh, sorry, a stash of hankies that was uh, part of it I found myself and then part of it someone gave, gave me their collection that they'd found. And I'm thinking it could become something a little bit like this. This dress here, a bandana oh, wow. dress. That's cool. I'm thinking I could stitch together the handkerchiefs and then make something to wear. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. So amazing. So I'm sure we've got some people on the line. I mean, certainly we've got me on the line, who's not the most, uh, <laughs> the best sewer. Have you got, what are your tips for people that are starting out in sewing for the first time? I think just 
go easy on yourself. And I, and I say this, you know, to everyone, you're going to make mistakes in anything that you're learning brand new, you've never tried before, you're going to be a bit scared yeah. for a number of reasons, screwing up, um, maybe sewing over your finger, <laughs> ruining fabric that cost you money. Yeah. And then, you know, you, you're going to, there is going to be ups and downs in the beginning of your sewing journey, but just know everyone started somewhere. Everyone started and made mistakes. You just have to own them. And honestly, I feel like when you're wearing something that you've made yourself, no one else is going to notice unless they're like a master seamstress. <laughs> no one else is going to notice your wonky seam. No one else is going to notice where you've accidentally, you know, snipped a hole with your snips, um, you know, when you're trying to cut off some extra thread. No one's going to notice that. So just keep in your mind that like learning a new language, yeah. sewing is something brand new. <laughs> Yeah, and you're not going to be going on the great because you're sewing these straight away. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what's, what are the essential bits of kit you should be getting if you're about well, to start? Well, of course, you'll need a sewing machine. But when buying a sewing machine, you don't have to buy something fancy. Mine's secondhand. I got mine for $250 on Gumtree. Ooh. And um, so, yeah, sewing machine, of course. It needs to be able to do a straight stitch, do a zigzag stitch, and then um, a, a good pair of scissors. I just, um, these ones are like the, the mid-range ones from Spotlight, but, you know, you start off with, you know, what you can afford and then once you get your skills up and you start to feel, build confidence, that's when you can start to get more things. Then you'll need um, threads, like cotton thread or polyester thread, some chalk, a ruler, um, but you can find a lot of the things around your home even if you don't have that. So if you don't have a ruler, you could use the edge of a book and if you don't have a pattern weight you could use a drink bottle so there, there's always um there's always things to be found and actually I find a lot of great things you know if maybe someone's stopped sewing or um or they've decided they don't want to do that hobby anymore you might find at, at an op shop or a garage sale you'll find someone's kit that has lots of things that you could utilize as a beginner if you're starting to build your and so kid. even more so now because how many of us started lockdown crafts yeah and decided they weren't for us anymore yeah now is the time to be hitting the op shops for second hand definitely crafts. definitely and what about resources so um you mentioned earlier like youtube tutorials weren't around when you started but obviously they are now you got they are now watch stuff i mean obviously there's your stuff which is number one but yeah what else well i mean have? within australia there is a great like i can't say this enough but the sewing community within Australia is so amazing there are people that are always sharing tips and tricks I mean with the introduction of reels and TikTok there are heaps of people sharing their um you know little things that you'd never even have thought of to improve your sewing your sewing time but there are people like Maddie from the Essentials Club she is um she's actually just in tweet so she's down the road from me and um, there's people in Brisbane, even Kylie and the Machine, they are um, a woven labels company, but they have tips and tricks. They are very inspiring. You can always find things on their um, Instagram. So if you just start typing in hashtag uh, me made or hashtag sewing wardrobe, things like that, you'll, you'll start to discover the sewing community and you'll find people that um, are sewing things that you like or have a similar body to you and you can follow them and then get inspiration and get ideas. And that's that's basically how I learned everything that I know about sewing, just yeah. through other people. Yeah, amazing. And that's, I mean, this is why things like Instagram are so amazing now, right? We yeah. actually see everyone around the world and learn from them, be inspired. Yes. So let's crack into some of the projects. I know you've got some great projects to show and tell. Um, yeah. I'd love to hear about some of them. Well, okay, what have I got here? All right, first of all, this bucket hat I made with some linen I found at an op shop and the tutorial I got from Maddie, the Essentials Club. So this is something that like coming into summer. Yeah. We need a hat. We need a hat for the beach. Mine's a bit um, mangled because it's been in a beach bag. You get the idea. Then I've got over here now, last year, around garage sale trail time, I went to a garage sale down my street and I met this old man and he was selling his stamp collection. I'm not a stamp collector, but I love collecting beautiful things. <laughs> so I bought his collection, some of it, and I decided that I was going to frame up 
Wow. Some of the really beautiful ones within the collection. So I've got a set. I'm going to make a third one just mm -hmm. so that I can preserve or display these beautiful stamps that he, he and his family, his, his dad and his grandfather, had collected. And I just, it sort of feels like taking a little vacay um, because you're looking, I'm going, oh, that one's from Malaysia, that one's from um, Nauru, that one's from Czechos Czechoslovakia. So, you know, when we can't travel right now, I feel like this is a beautiful way to just imagine um, and, you know. And how about the fact you've got the story of the guy you bought them from? I know, he was really, he was really lovely as well. Um, and he was excited that someone was going to take on his collection. Yeah. Yeah. So um, another one is what, the one that I showed you before. I always find wool and rackets in the op shops. Um, so I recommend if you, you know, if you want it easy, this is such an easy, uh, you know, DIY project that anyone can do. Uh, you, you don't really need any tools. You just need wool and a racket. You can also buy like plastic needles if you need something just to help your hands. Um, Did I see you've got a tutorial on how to do that on your Instagram? I don't. There's there's not a tutorial. I think it's just a little a little watch through. But I'm 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 gonna get there. There'll be a tutorial. <laughs> Great. And then um, with the wool as well, I bought a weaving. Uh, mm -hmm. What is it called? It looks like a Mazzoni print. Oh, yes. Oh my God. Well, it's, it does, you're right, you're right, a little yeah. bit, yeah. So I bought the um, the loom from a girl who makes them in Queensland. She makes the looms by, ha by hand, bought it from her on Etsy, and then I used that secondhand uh, wool and yarn that I found, and I started weaving, and I thought, oh, that's a really great way that I could also use up the, use up the wool. Yeah. Because I got a lot of it. <laughs> and then, of course, I kind of go past, um, you know, sewing. So, you know, they're always secondhand vintage patterns at op shops now this one this is a dress that I made with vintage wow. fabric and I just I think I might have used a McCall's pattern actually but yeah so I've I've made that like you know you, anyone can find some fabulous fabric and then you've got to stitch it into something new to wear what would you recommend would, would be the first thing you should try mate so if you're going to make a, an item of clothing for the first time what would you do first mm. An item of clothing. I think you could Maybe try making. Clothes. You could try making I, on my website. I have one called the rectangle ruffle skirt. Oh, yeah. It's also known as the Sonia skirt, and it's made of rectangles. It uses the measurements of your body, and it uses a couple of key techniques. So sewing a straight stitch, hmm. creating gathers, or creating a ruffle, and then creating a casing. And I've made heaps of these skirts and I've taught it in workshops. I think if you're starting out, this is a great one just to practice those skills. Yeah. And then you, when you finish, you go, okay, I made something I can wear. Yeah. And then you'll go, okay, I can apply those skills to something else. And do you still, do you use vintage sewing patterns? Do you pick those up at garage sales and op shops? Oh, I have so many of them. <laughs> Here's just a handful of the ones that are next to me. But um, I, I don't always use them just because the sizing is very different to what it used to be. So, yeah, like this is a size 14, Australian 14, but now I'm considered a 18 if you would look at, you know, using these sizes. Yeah. So I often look at these for inspiration, mm -hmm. um, not not always for sewing, but just uh, for myself. But, like, I look at, go, okay, I like how they've added the ruffle to the bottom of that. I like the length. Yeah. Or here, like this. This gathered skirt here, you know, the, the, the different um, sizes. So this is similar to the skirt that I, I was talking about just before, but um, the dimensions of the, the, the top of the skirt and the bottom are different to what I'd usually make. So I go, oh, I could, I could apply, you know, this to my skirt instead of using it just because the sizing is sometimes off. But I have actually made a couple of, I don't have them with me right now, they're in my room, but uh, a couple of things with vintage patterns that, stand out and the, the instructions on old patterns are they're not always as clear as sewing patterns that you'll find now but okay. it's cool it's an interesting way to learn and see you know the techniques and how they what they called things back in the day <laughs> we've actually had a good question that we could cover right now oh yeah Jen's asked us how you went about creating your own patterns well I like to work with shapes because when you think about a sewing pattern like if I grab that skirt again, if you look at that, 
all patterns or all clothing, the blocks that each piece comes from, it comes from a shape. So instead of uh, using a pattern, when I'm drafting my own ones, in my mind, I'm going, okay, so this, that's a rectangle, that's a rectangle. And I break it down into its basic shapes. And you can do that with many items of clothing. So in, in this case, this shirt, you can see the shape. All right. You can see the shape. And they often just have, they have, they've been slightly tapered or they've been, you know, you've, you've taken off a triangle. So there's another shape. And then the neck hole, right. it's a semicircle. So you've taken away another shape. Now, using shapes is not always the most flattering <laughs> for all body types, but it's a great place to start. And I think um, also a great place to start understanding pattern making. Mm. Um, you don't have to be good at math to draft patterns at all. You just have to, you know, you need to plus and sub, like add and subtract. And uh, so in the case in my, with my patterns, there's, n there's no, nothing tricky. It's always just measure your body, add 15 centimetres okay. or st stuff like that. that yeah. sounds very simple. We're having quite a few requests for the pattern you mentioned, the skirts. So we'll make sure we circulate that after the um, session. Yep. And um, there'll, be, there'll be a link to Daisy's website coming up for you guys as well so that you can go and check out all of the great um, patterns and um, tutorials that Daisy has on her site. Um, do you want to do the little, should we jump into bunting and while you're doing that, I'll have yeah. questions that people sure. want to post to you. All right, let me just get all close to this. Now, I need to make myself big so I can make sure I'm showing the details. How do I do that? Mm. How do I make myself big? <laughs> now, mm. view, full screen. That should do it, you think? All I can see is you, you're big. Oh no, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's try this way. No, this one, no. You're big for everyone else is the good news. Okay, oh, it's not, uh, okay. If everyone else can see me, okay, okay, that's good. All right, I just wanna make sure you can see what I'm showing you. Okay, so bunting, let's do bunting. <laughs> I've got some behind me here. So this one is a smaller one that I made with rectangles. And then the one that I'm going to show you today is this one here that I made with semicircles and triangles. So if you are keen to make bunting, I think this is a great project to practice your skills. So you're going to be practicing sewing a straight stitch, sewing, um, you're going to be uh, clipping and notching, which is taking away fabric uh, to help the shape look better at the end, like a curve or a triangle and then also applying bias binding. So bias binding, I think for many people starting out is a little bit scary just because it's like understanding how it applies. Um, once you can master bias binding, your sewing life will be changed. It's the best. So to make bunting, you're going to need fabric. I've got this bed sheet and it's just cotton. I recommend um, using a woven fabric. So that means it's not stretchy, just something uh, that's, not stretchy, woven. <laughs> and I'd say, depending on how big you'd like your bunting to be and how much of it, you'll just need more or less fabric. But I have, I think this is a single bed sheet. And I, I think this one here is about two meters long. You can't see the full thing, it's hanging up there on the wall. So you need your fabric. Then you're gonna need some bias binding. So this one here, I got from an up shop for a dollar. And you can also make your own bias binding. But I think for this project, um, it's easier to just use pre-made bias binding. So this is double fold bias binding, which means that it's already got two folds here and then it's gonna be folded again to make the bunting, the little strap, the strand that goes on the top. Then you'll need matching thread. So I've used red just so you can see my stitching. You'll need scissors, a ruler and something to mark your fabric with. And then I'm also going to make a template. So I've got some card paper that I had from another project. But if you don't have card, you could use the back of a magazine because it's kind of stiff. I love using the back of my magazines just because it's like, it doesn't matter what's on the front or the back. It's just use what I've already got. And then um, I've got a sewing machine and an iron and an ironing board. And then that's all you need, I think. Yes. All right. 
So before we get started, if you are using secondhand fabric, like me, wash your fabric. You might not know who it belonged to before. If you have allergies like me, I need to make sure that I wash anything secondhand because dust. <laughs> so wash it and then dry it and press it or iron it so it's nice and flat. That would just mean when you do cut out your shapes later, they won't be wonky. So wash your fabric and then we're going to make a template. So you could use any shape really, but I'm going to use um, two shapes today. So you could do a rectangle, you could do a triangle, or you could do a semicircle. And to make a template, I've just got my A4 sheet of card here. Now to do a rectangle, you can just use the A4 and fold it in half. This is for, uh, sorry, this is for big bunting, but if you wanted to make it smaller, you just freehand the size that you would like. So that's for a rectangle. And I used an A4 as well to, yes, great point there, Teresa. If you pre-wash fabric, especially when making clothes, uh, it helps to avoid shrinkage later on. But in this case, we're, uh, I'm suggesting to wash it for dust. Or like sometimes you'll find secondhand fabrics in, in places that have been used for pets or something like that. So you never know. So I've just freeheaded my templates here and I've gone just sort of inside the A4. Like I said, make it however big or small you'd like. And then I also did the same thing with my triangles so that they're similar in size. And then I cut them out. So there's my two templates. And I kind of wanted mine to be a little bit quirky. So that's why I went with triangle and semicircle. And then with my fabric, with your fabric, lay it out flat on a table or on the floor. I'm not going to show you this. You can imagine, all right? Hopefully my descriptions are really good. So lay out your fabric nice and flat. And then taking your template, actually, go back. Lay your fabric nice and flat. Fold it on top of each other. So you have two layers. Then using your template, you're going to take your template and mark out, I think, 10, 10 of each shape. So I'm doing one of each. So I'm going to have 20 all together at the end. And I'm going to have 40 pieces in total because I'm going to do cut them out on the fold, which means I'll have two for a pair, two for a pair, and then cut them all out. So here's some that I've cut out like this and then so you're going to cut out as many as you'd like for as long as you'd like but I'm just thinking that um, 10 of each shape in my case will be enough so here's some of my triangles triangle triangle and now once you've got everything cut out time to get stitching if you've got pins you can pin things together here I'm not a pinner so taking your Taking your two cutouts, you're going to place them together with the right sides facing. So the right sides are the sides of the fabric, the good sides of the fabric facing out, lining them up. And then if you'd like to, pin around the edge, leaving this edge open. And then you're going to take it to the sewing machine and using about a one centimeter seam allowance, you're going to stitch around the edge. So hopefully you can see my red stitching. And I've left this straight edge open, kind of like a pocket, a pita, a pita, if you will. Can you tell I'm hungry? It's very hard to eat with Invisalign. You have to take them out and put it back in. Oh. Anyway, got a, I've got a pita. And then I've also got a triangle pita here. And if you were doing a rectangle, you could just, like I said, fold your A4 cut in half and just sew down this side and this side. You don't need to worry about the bottom because your fold's already there. Okay, so after you've stitched all of these up, I recommend doing this in kind of like a, um, what, what do you say, like a factory line. You just do them all, all each step, all together. <laughs> if it's feeling like a Peter pocket right now, me too. Okay, so we've got. I've got my Peters, what would a triangle be? I don't know what it would be. Uh, a triangle Peter, a, a snow cone maybe. So I've got all my shapes. Now we are going to clip or notch. So this is 
to improve the look of the shape here at the end. If I didn't take away, if I didn't clip this little triangle, it'd be very bulky. Oop. It'd be very bulky at the bottom of my triangle. So I'm gonna clip the bottom here. You can also trim away the excess seam allowance and then turn it out. Turn it out here. And you can use like the back of a pencil or a chopstick or even a knitting needle to poke out the point. And then you've created your, your little triangle bunting like this. And now you can go and press that and make sure it's nice and flat. If you've done the same thing with your circle, so you can't clip a circle because it's a, um, is it, is it concave, concave or convex? Have to check that. We're going to notch this one here. So notching is when you take away. So I'm going to cut little triangles all the way along. You could also use pinking shears or you could, um, or you could just trim the seam allowance altogether, but it's up to you that this is just a different, another skill that you can use, especially when you're making round things. So once you've done that all the way around, you can turn that out. And that just makes it nice and smooth and round. So we've got our round. Oh, I could make two of these. Look at this. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we've got our um we've got this one and we've got this one. We're gonna go to the ironing board and we are going to press. We're gonna make sure that everything's nice and flat. And if you do have a little bit of a wonky top here, you can just straighten that up. So once you've done that, like this one here, I'd probably trim that that little bit off there. And then I have my all my bunting bits. And this is where you're going to go get your bias binding. So I've got my double fold bias binding here. This one that I found at the op shop is very narrow. I would recommend like one centimetre bias binding or even two centimetre bias binding, just whatever you can find. Now this bias binding, it folds over. Folds over again. I don't know how I'm going to be able to show you this, but folds over again. Basically, we're creating a sandwich. I'm talking about food again. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> so we're using the bias binding. Oh, I should just say bias binding is a type of um, binding and it's cut on the bias. So the bias grain of the fabric goes 45 at a 45 degree angle, which means it's kind of got a bit of stretch to it. And it's great for things like bunting, but it's also great for finishing a neckline. Uh, because it's curved, finishing an armhole. You can also use it to finish the insides of a garment just to um, make sure everything's you know protected when it gets washed so it doesn't fray. But bias binding in this case, you might notice, you might reckon, like see it on straps of a dress or something just because it's stretchy. Um, so we've got our bias binding folded in half if, it's, if you've got your double bias binding, double folded bias binding. And then you can press it if you'd like to, but I actually just took mine straight over to the sewing machine and got ready to start stitching. So with our sandwich that we've created, I'm gonna use this as my, um, just to show you. So this is what the bias binding looks like. We're gonna take our little bunting and we're gonna sandwich inside the bias binding. Like this. And then we're going to stitch along here, like that. So if you'd like to use pins here, you can do that. I didn't use pins because I wanted mine to be kind of uh, organic in terms of the, the, the gap between each, each shape but if you'd like to pin and then measure so you can fold that over fold that over the top of the pita and then you're going to stitch along there starting from maybe 20 centimeters in from your bias binding just so that you have something to tie onto a peg or a, a nail and then you've got your folded over here, and then you're gonna stitch. Bias binding is strong. And depending on the fabric you use, um, most bias binding that you can buy from the shops is like polyester or cotton. So it's pretty strong and it's made by a machine usually. Um, so I'd say it's quite strong. If you wanted to do something else, you could use like, uh, like a, a woven cord, you know, that flat cord that you can buy and you might find it as like a drawstring of a bag and you often find it in lots of different widths. You could just do the same thing. 
fold it over and sandwich it on top of the the open the the, the what is it called the open edge of the bunting so you're going to do that you're going to stitch all the way down and then give it about 10 centimeters or so and then add your next shape and then continue stitching that's it that's bunting so i've mine here is like two meters long and i'm going to use it uh to decorate the fence at the garage sale that i'm holding you so you can recognize gonna... it oh, if that's why you were gonna... making bunting at the moment yeah now, if, if anyone wants me to like go back to something that i might have said a bit quickly let me know now there's a bunch of questions coming in so we'll okay. definitely start to cover them i've got a question first though which you said yes. that's two meters of bunting behind you how many um triangles or pitter pockets is that i think i cut it out cut out eight of each shape yeah okay for the two meters these ones we're going to add in I, I kept these uh, free so i could demonstrate but they'll be added into this bunting there's a big long strip down here so I am going to bring up the questions. Okay. A lot coming in. I um, saw some popping up. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's really, it's really great. So please everyone feel free to keep uh, popping in some questions. And in fact, there was a lady mentioning that she's part of a bunting library, which oh. I'd never heard about bunting libraries before. How great is that? What? Yeah. So that's pretty exciting. And um, so hopefully you've got some good inspiration for some more, um, some more bunting for the library um so the, we had a question from gabrielle around what you're going to do with the weaving once it's done well i'm going to hang it on my wall i'm having a bit of a homewares moment i've been sewing clothes for you know the last couple of years and my studio walls were bare my bedroom wall bare until i made this um this Oh, wow. Lining. Until I made this, I had nothing on my bedroom walls. So that was a DIY project. It was the colour combination. Like, it's amazing. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'm thinking I'll take it off. This is only my first one, so I'm going to practice uh, and then maybe give it another go. But, yeah, I'd love to hang it on my wall. I don't know what else I could do with it. It's, de it's art to me. It's going on the wall. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and Pip's wondering if you sell what you make. I think we may have a potential customer for you, Daisy. <laughs> Pip, I'm so sorry. I don't sell what I make because I think that regardless of what you think about your ability to craft or create something, I think you will find it way more rewarding if you try and make it yourself. And that's basically my whole, what I'm all about. It's like encouraging other people to just try it, try and do it themselves. I'm sorry. I cannot make anything for you. <laughs> Um, Eden's asking about vintage patterns and whether mm -hmm. you ever use ones that are in a different size to you. I do. I have before. Uh, and sometimes I'll just add a centimetre here and there. But I always try and buy ones that are within like one size above or below my size so that if I did make it, I could just add to it. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't ever use one to make something too oversized um, because like I said, like a size, 12 I'm a size 12 a size 12 vintage pattern is like a size eight yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yes not worth it um and good question from Janet around some suggestions for what to sew in clothing for a basic beginner well any of the tutorials on my website are great for a basic beginner not trying to not trying to um sell my tutorials here they're free they're free tutorials but anything that um has like an elastic waistband or um, gathering, like like I said, my rectangle ruffle skirt, or I've got a top called the uh, rectangle sleeve top. They're great for just practicing. They are all loose kind of boxy shapes, but it's great to sort of learn the basics and get, um, get the basics. But other sewing patterns or people that you can look for, for, um, beginner sewing patterns. So there's Seamwork magazine. I have to, of course, mention Peppermint magazine. They have a free um, sewing pattern every issue. Oh, do you? And they? they're, yeah, free. Free. Oh, wow. And they're all online. So you can download them as PDF patterns. Yeah. So he, all different levels and abilities. Um, and then, like I said, Maddie from the Essentials Club. She has YouTube videos. She's got her blog. She's great as well. Um, I mean, th these are just, fr hers are free. And then if you start to, if you go on to, um, what is it called? The fold line, 
the fold line. Yeah. It is a website that has a database for sewing patterns and you can choose the level of, of the sewing that, uh, the sewing pattern that you'd like to find um, and the type of garment that you're trying to create. So the fold line is a great resource. Uh, there's also in the folds, they're a Sydney pattern company and paper cut patterns, they're in New Zealand. They all have great um, instructions and great projects. And tied into this is a, gr a really good question from Emma about how to find f sewing friends to ask advice from when you're doing a project. A great question. <laughs> this is a great question because oh. I, I'm actually very lucky. I have some amazing sewing friends from Brisbane. Uh, and So I'm on the Gold Coast there in Brizzy, but we just connected. And now we've, we go out for ramen. We'll go out for bubble tea. <laughs> like we're real life friends now. I think just have a little bit of like be a little bit cheeky slide in the dms say hello i i had a girl <laughs> i had a girl uh, liz she was like daisy I'm, I'm living in tweed for the next few months can we hang out one day i was like okay <laughs> and we went we went fabric shopping together we had a great day so i think just what you know you, you could always just ask you never know if um someone will say yes or no obviously don't be like a bit put don't be pushy but everyone has their own life but if you if you think that you have something in common or you like the same style as other people um and if you reach out Instagram, are there things like facebook groups for sewers to meet each other yeah or? yeah there definitely is i just saw someone mention the australian sewing guild i think that's on facebook oh yeah yeah um i guess that there's there are other communities around like a library has a sewing group can i come to oh, your oh, library <laughs> Yeah, that's a good tip, you know, checking out what council services might be in that space. Yep. Mm. I think just say hello or, you know, reach out, invite them to something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've got another one here around how do you make sure your stitch is in line if you're hand stitching? I <laughs> am not really a hand stitcher. So I'm not the best person to ask that question. But if you are hand stitching... I, I am very impressed by you. <laughs> I think you made a really interesting point early on about not being afraid for it not to be perfect. Yeah. As well, you know. Oh, yeah. I love that about the fact that your bunting's actually, you know, the spaces between aren't necessarily exact and it just still looks beautiful and quirky. Yep. And fantastic. Well, I could just say it's intentional and no one's going to, yeah. you know, no one's going to question it. Exactly. I mean, that's why the back of all my buttons that I've re-sewed on look like some kind of messed flat, messed up flower <laughs> on the back. Oh, I just um, saw someone else said, um, does it have to look perfect? Nothing ever has to look perfect, especially yeah. if you've made it by hand. It's you, You've made it with your hands. It's not machine made. It's not factory made. You're not, a, if you're not a professional, I don't think, um, yeah, I think just Oh, someone said drawing a straight. Yeah, okay. The chat, the chat's got this covered. Well done, everyone. Covered. <laughs> They've got it. Um, we've got a few bunting specific coming up. Yes. Um, Vazoom would like to know what the size, what the size of the triangles was. Yes. Okay. So I was just measuring that here. The top of the triangle is 22 centimeters, and then each side is about 18, 19 centimeters. But I, like I said, I used an A4 an A4 piece of card and I just freehanded within the A4 because I wanted them to be kind of similar. So hopefully that helps. I'm 22 lucky. centimetres, 18, 18. It's really great to see everyone helping each other in the chat there. And Barb's suggestion to use old patterns as wrapping paper. How yes. Cool is that? Yep. That is really that, cool. I've seen that before. I've received something wrapped like that. I thought it was very cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, so Janet's just saying that she didn't catch all the sites to follow for sewing ideas and help. Yep. Uh, okay. How can I give well, this Well, why don't we do a follow-up for that? We could do a, well, yeah. we'll, compile, we'll compile a list with Daisy and we'll do a follow-up yep. to everyone post-session. And we're also recording today, so you will get a copy of that so that you can listen back. But we'll, um, mm -hmm. we'll get all those recommendations for you so you can go out and find out more. Um, so I think we're sort of coming to the end of the session. I think we've covered most of the questions we've had. If anyone's got any kind of final questions, feel free to um, jump into the chat. But um, anything anything you want to add in, Daisy? Oh, I don't know. I was just going to try and catch up on the chat too. What, 
Lots of great tips coming in. So many places great. to find selling mates. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, if anyone has any other questions, chuck them in the chat now. There's wow, I can't believe it's already been that long. There's some really great tips around um, connecting with other sewers, isn't there? I mean, yeah. Perth is borrow. Um, there, there was a bit more, actually, you, you may have missed the fantastic post around the Facebook bunting. So the Zoom was saying there's a Facebook bunting page and they let you borrow bunting for free. If they don't have the colours you want, they'll make it and add it to the library. So if you're in Greenwood WA, get yourself down to the bunting library. That is How fun. amazing is that? I is love it? that. That sounds like it needs to be in Frankie magazine, right? Oh, doesn't it? It's yes. so fantastic. Yeah, so we'll definitely make sure I can see lots of you are keen to hear more about those recommended websites and YouTube yep. channels. So we will um, we will be sure to share those with you post the session. Um, just going to, I think I've got a couple of uh, slides to share. Um, so really just wanted to round things up by saying a massive thank you to Daisy um, for being involved. It's been a fantastic session. I am now super excited to go and make some bunting <laughs> and to um, go beyond sewing on a button um, in my sewing skills. Um, please do um, follow Daisy's adventures and um, follow her on Instagram. So you'll see that her online there. Um, and do go to check out her website at DIYDaisy.com. As Daisy's mentioned, there's some great free sewing tutorials there. Um, and you'll find that the dress pattern that Daisy recommended as your kind of first step if you're a beginner is um, on the website. Is that on the website or on your Instagram reels, Daisy? On my, on my website. On your website. Great. Yeah. Or on my Instagram. Both. 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 Um, we'd love to hear what you thought of today. Um, Andrew, I believe, is popping a little link in the chat box now. So feel free to click that link to fill out. It's just two or three questions to tell us what you thought of today so that we can um, improve these sessions in the future. Or you can hold up your phone and be directed straight onto the, um, the website. Um, so don't forget, of course, that um, there's two weekends of garage sales coming up. So if you are planning on making some bunting um, or you need to go and get some fabrics, some fabrics or secondhand craft items next weekend and the 20th to 21st of November is the time to do it. Um, on the website, you can search for sales happening near you uh, and you'll see on here there's over a million items already pre-loved items already listed for sale and in exciting news, Daisy and I sort of alluded to this. Daisy's having a garage sale. I am. What are you selling, Daisy? Tell us what's happening. Well, I do have a bunch of fabric to de stash. I've got some vintage sewing patterns. I've got bric a brac. I've got furniture. Um, I'll have some uh, rackets and wool there if anyone wants to put together a little bundle. I'm going to have lots of secondhand clothing. Lots. Not just mine, my sister's. Um, I'm doing it with two friends. So there's going to be lots and lots of bits and bobs. I've got a fridge. I've got a table. Like, there's everything. Uh, there's everything. <laughs> yeah. So if you're in the Gold Coast and it's next Saturday, that's right, isn't it? That's right. Starting not right and early at six thirty. Yep. Get there early. <laughs> um, so if you're if you're local, feel free to go along and meet um, Daisy um, next week. Yes. So, Thanks everyone. Um, Thanks for coming. Thank you so much. Were there any more questions, Daisy, that I missed while we oh, were I don't know. wrapping up there that we need to end on? Don't know. Uh, like I just said in the chat, if, if I missed anyone's question and they really um, desperate for me to answer, send it to me in, on Instagram and I'll send you back a message right away. I'm going to be sitting here waiting for you. <laughs> um, huge thank you, Daisy. Thank you, everyone, for dialing in and joining us. We hope you had a fantastic time and hopefully we'll see you at another trail tutorial over this weekend. Yes. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thanks, Daisy. Bye. Bye.